Morning. Morning. Art Hostage here, and we're going to do another live. Well, it's Saturday morning. It's quarter to 12. And I thought I'd come live. Bright, sunny day here. Hope what you're all doing well. I went to bed yesterday and tried to stay in bed as long as possible. I've not been feeling but 100%, to be honest with you. Um, been feeling a bit unwell. Obviously anticipating stuff and all that game. Um, you know, all the health stuff and all that. And I'm, I'm in pain and all that stuff. But anyway... Um, Right, shall we get right into it straight away, just with a few headlines and a couple of interesting stories? The U.S. Air Force secretly develops missiles that could obliterate Iran's nuclear facilities by zapping their electronics without harming civilians. It's an interesting story about technology, because obviously there's a lot of technology that the military have that the public are not aware of, even obviously for the same reasons other militaries are not aware of, but at governmental level, there's always indications that there are advanced technologies An interesting news in the stolen art world. A 17th century painting that was stolen from an Oxford University art gallery more than four years ago has been recovered in Romania. Salvador Rosca's A Rocky Coast with Soldiers Studying a Plan was taken from Christchurch Picture Gallery in 2020. Two other artworks snatched in the same raid, Sir Anthony Van Dyke's A Soldier on Horseback and A Boy Drinking by Anibali Karachi are still missing. The three works are thought to be worth a total of £10 million. Now, it's an interesting story about the cluster of thefts around 2020 and the Romanian gang that was involved. They abseiled down into a storage facility and stole very rare books worth several million. They're suspected in this robbery as well, as well as other robberies at the time. Mary, Queen of Scots, gold necklace, rosary, stolen from Arundel, and gold um, trophies. And at the time, there was never a reward offered on this case, specifically because they knew they were out the country. Now, they arrested... They arrested um, the, the, some of the Romanian gang, 12 of them, on the book robbery. And whilst they were in custody, police in Romania... Um, right, were given handed back a lot of the stolen books. And they all got um, um, sentences of between three and five years each. They'll all be out now. <clears throat> so now this picture has been handed back. Now the story that's being, right, that's being spun is that an antique art dealer in Romania bought all three paintings, not knowing they were stolen, sold the other two on and had this one left and had a road to Damascus moment and was overwhelmed with guilt, so he handed it in to the police. A very unlikely story. We don't know the circumstances behind it. Maybe he was facing other charges and he handed it back as a sweetener. Maybe there is an attempt to recover these paintings right, um, oh, uh, covertly because they're not in the UK and money would exchange hands. And that this is the, the test balloon. 
But thieves or handlers don't just give back multi-million pound paintings for nothing, overwhelmed with guilt. If that was the case, why didn't he just leave it behind the bike shed metaphorically and let it be discovered? If there's an attempt to recover these paintings and, it, and it's cloak and dagger, good luck to them if they can do it. I just told the truth of how it works, of who gets what in and the amount of money paid. And that any recoveries where people get paid, right, breaks British law. But then UK law might not come into play if these are recovered in Romania. But the most valuable one is Van Dyke's man, uh, soldier on a horseback. That is reputed to be worth 10 million on its own. So this was a handback as part of an, uh, a web of, of some kind of deal that's going on. I don't want to say too much about it at the moment, but when it unfolds, right, and... Right, don't be surprised to hear that Arthur Brand might be behind it. Well, good luck to him if he can do it, if he can get away with it. All I know is in the UK, if you attempt anything like recovering stolen art and getting paid for it, right, you get arrested. It's against the law. It moves into a grey area when you do it in different countries. But if the money em emanates from the UK, again, it breaks the law. But there's, a, you know, there's a lot of stolen art that's out there that's been taken out of the UK that's um, for sale. And whether that is for sale for cash or handed back and money is paid. And then, right, um, as we go forward, it comes out, what really happened. And there are some people that are allowed to do it and some people that are not. And it's a club. It's an old boys club. But it'll be interesting to see what's happened. Because, as I say, Arthur Brand went dark last November. And there's one or two things happening behind the scenes. Well, good luck to him. I don't want to tread on his toes. I don't want to piss on his parade if he can do something. Good luck to him. The fact that he does stuff and it's all behind the scenes and there are laws broken and he's not held to account, so what? But I will call him out on it. And Dick Ellis and all of those, I'll call them out on it when they do it. The fact that they can get away with it, well, good. But at some stage... Right, the main thing is, if people are stupid enough to go along with it, right, and get a few crumbs, right, for for doing it, well, it's up to them. Let them get on with it. But yes, the Romanian gang, they, you know, there is a lot of outstanding stuff out there, and it's whether they're prepared to hand it back for what they've been offered. And that whether it's a sting operation, but they know when um, when it's a setup and all of that. And if they take the precautions and they're happy with what they get for handing back the stolen art, well, okay, that's fair enough. If it turns out to be a sting and they all get arrested, right? Well, it's their own fault, isn't it? But I should bring you more on what's happening because there's a lot happening behind the scenes. And as I say, as and when it's appropriate, I should reveal what's going down because this is only the first instalment. We got laughing boys in the Netherlands, which, um, which they're trying to recover and people get paid. And that's why it's a difficult one to do because it's a national treasure. We got the Van Dyke from Christ Church Gallery, a part of three pictures. One's been handed back, right? So the other two might come back. There's Mary Queen of Scots rosary worth a million. 
that was taken from Arundel. There are other outstanding um, works of art, but, but recovering them in the UK is legally impossible. So anyway, let's move on. Hamas leadership is considering leaving Qatar. They're looking at two countries as an option. Algeria, perhaps, because Algeria is where they that their um, support is the strongest, Hamas. Then there was this case of Gideon, whatever his name is, from the campaign against anti-Semitism. And he was, um, well, this is what he said. He said he left the synagogue and was um, walking down the street. And I'm not too sure about that. But anyway, right, he's standing on the pavement and there's the pro-Palestinian march going by and the police come over to him and say, look, you can't cross the road. You're provocative. You're openly Jewish because you've got a kipper on. OK, and these are pro-Palestinian protesters and it could go off here. So... We're not letting you cross the road. And the implications of that have gone viral on, on the internet. And this is, um, this is what the police officer said to him, and I'll quote, you are quite openly Jewish. This is a pro-Palestinian march. I am not accusing you of anything, but I am worried about the reaction to your presence. And the campaign for and against anti-Semitism says on the Saturday, the 27th of April, next Saturday, the next anti-Israel march, we are asking you, Jewish or not, to stand up for the tolerance and decency of which this country is so rightly proud, simply by going for a walk. And there will be opinions for and against, but you can see that there is a double standard in play, in my opinion. And that there has been a myth created that you mustn't upset the Islamic community, the Muslim community. Why? Because all oh, they could um, react very violently. Because that is, the, if, if you um, boil it down to what the reasons are, that is the pure and simple reason. We saw about, do you remember the vote in the House of Commons where the Speaker of the House gave them um, an out because the Labour Party complained, right, that if their MPs, right, voted in a certain way with regards to Israel, that they would have blood on their hands, right, and they would become targets. So they fudged the vote. It's a myth that's been created over the last few decades that you daren't speak about Islam, you daren't even ask questions, and when it comes to policing, there must be a double standard. When it comes to accusations of serious crime, right, you mustn't investigate. You've got to sweep it under the carpet. Why? Because, oh, if you upset them, that community, they could set the whole country alight. That is what is, that is the main reason. Now, is that the way you should run these things? You know, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? It's a double standard, and that's very dangerous. You can't pick and choose. Britain's first million-pound footballer, Trevor Francis, who died, he's cut his sons out of his multi-million-pound will because he was estranged from them. He left all his money to his brother and his sister. And today it's happy birthday, Dave. Many happy returns to Nicholas Lindhurst, who turned 63 today. Of course, that's Rodney, Rodney Trotter. And this is an, um, um, an interesting one, right? There's been reported widely in the press, and I'm quoting from the mainstream media. The Biden administration has just officially abolished Title IX as we knew it. 
Now, sex equals gender identity. In a nutshell, the new rewrite means men can take academic and athletic scholarships from women, men will have full access to bathrooms, locker rooms, etc. Men could be housed in dorm rooms with women students and faculty must compel their speech by requiring the use of preferred pronouns. If the guidelines above are ignored or even questioned, then you can be charged with harassment. And you can make of that what you will. That all of these things are part of um, what will make up the American presidential election. Morning, Zoe, and how are you today? I hope you're doing well. So there's just a little snapshot of what is going on this Saturday morning. Um, the Iranians are now right taking the line of dismissing right the response from Israel as children playing with children's toys. There's no footage of any damage, okay? And and um, the Iranians said they're not going to respond. Now, to be honest with you, I know it's been a little bit of kabuki theatre. I know that it's all been choreographed, but I mean, I suppose we've got to be grateful for small mercies that it hasn't escalated at this stage. But what we can be assured of is that red lines have been crossed. The red line from Israel, right, bombing, right, the Damascus embassy, of uh, the Iranian embassy in uh, consulate in Damascus, the Iranian attack on Israel last Saturday and the, the Israeli response two days ago against Iran. Regardless of how they spin it, okay, those were red lines that have been crossed. And there's no going back from that. But thankfully, it hasn't escalated and they can temper, temper it down. But until the next flashpoint, because what would happen at Flashpoint, you get to a certain stage. Now that stage has moved on. That direct attacks from Iran on Israel, Israel on Iran, are firmly on the table. So to be honest with you, it's almost like a delayed action. Right until such t until the next time. The leadership of Hamas are thinking about leaving Qatar, probably going to Algeria. Maybe the Qatari authorities, because Qatar likes to sit on the fence with one foot in the West and one foot in the Middle East and Islam and things. And I mean, that kind of model of Qatar sitting on the fence is interesting because, it, you know, um, many people sit on the fence. Or many people appear to be one thing when they're, when they're something completely different. The talk was, I don't know whether it's true, Right, but the Klaus Schwab, he's over 80, I think. He's going to stand down and retire. And the next person to take over from Klaus Schwab is going to be none other than Tony Blair. I don't know. We have seen a lot of the older leaders coming back, not least David Cameron as the Foreign Secretary. And all of the things that are on the list for 2024 are yet to play out.
But I think as we stand here one week after the attacks on Israel from Iran, I think, to be honest with you, let's be truthful, that the diplomatic community, right, deserves credit for keeping a lid on it, to be honest. And I know we can all be cynical and say it was all staged and everything, but to be able to thread it all the way through and get to the stage where we are, but I think the diplomatic community, you know, the uh, diplomats, and they need to be, you know, they need to be congratulated thus far. And of course, today we've got a full program of football, including um, the semi final of the FA Cup. Now, at midday, right, um, up past 12, it all starts. Up past 12, we, in Scotland, we've got Aberdeen against Celtic. Where is it being played, I wonder? Is it Hamden Park? That's at 12.30. We've also got Leicester at home to West Bromwich Albion kicking off at 12.30. At three o'clock, we got Southampton are away to Cardiff. Leeds are not playing. Ipswich are not playing. In the Premier League, we've got Luton are at home to Brentford at three o'clock. Sheffield United are at home to Burnley at three o'clock. Then at quarter past five, funny time, quarter past five, we've got the semi-final of the FA Cup at Wembley between Manchester City and Chelsea. And then this evening at 7.30, we got Wolverhampton Wanderers at home to Arsenal. So there is interest out there for today with the football. And then tomorrow we got the other semi-final at 3.30, Coventry City versus Manchester United. But it starts at, at 1.30 you know, in the Premier League with Everton at home and Nottingham Forest. And I hope everyone can get behind Everton. And then at 4.30, the big game tomorrow, um, in the Premier League is Fulham at home to Liverpool. Verstappen is, is proving its business as usual in the Chinese Grand Prix. He's on pole position. Lewis Hamilton had a disastrous qualifying. He's back in 18th. People are even calling for Lewis Hamilton to retire. Goodness gracious me. The London Marathon, when's that? Is that tomorrow? There you go, it is. Yeah, there you go. It's the London Marathon tomorrow. And it's from Greenwich Park to the Mall. 50,000 people are, are going to be competing. So that's tomorrow. So there's quite a weekend of sport on. Leicester West Brom, thank you, um, Pat. It, oh, is that this evening, is it, everyone? In the boxing, 
It's Devon Haney against Ryan Garcia. And as some of you may know, to be honest, I'm a big supporter and fan of Devon Haney. Always have been. Why? Well, why primarily his father, Bill Haney, has a checkered past, admittedly so. Went to jail, reformed. He came out of jail and he's guided his son, Devon Haney, into who I think is the best pound for pound fighter in the world. And I've been saying that for two years. Right, but the controversy that surrounds a lot of boxers and people in stuff, right, Devon Haney doesn't seem to have a lot of baggage in that way. He, he seems to be very well behaved, quite humble, and he doesn't seem to be of that gangster ilk. I might be wrong, but he just comes across as a decent young man. And that's testament in my book, in my opinion, to his father, Bill um, Haney. Now, Ryan Garcia, on the other hand, seems to be showing certain outrageous behaviour and all of that. He's supported by Oscar De La Hoya and all of those. He's had a different pathway. He, he might have had a deprived background, but it's, there's lots of things that have been saying, so he's got a different story. So, um, to be honest with you, it's a, diff it, it's a difficult one. If 10% if, if, if of what Ryan Garcia says has happened to him in his life is true, that will be shocking enough. Just 10%. However, with regards to sporting things, right, I, um, I'm a supporter of Devon Haney, so I would naturally support Devon Haney in whatever fight he has. Um, Garcia missed weight, probably be off. Is that correct, JJ? Did he miss the weight? So doesn't he have time to sort of do the skipping and all that with all the plastic all over in the polythene and sweat it off? I don't know. You're making a fair point, Zoe. Ryan Garcia is using the excuse of hyping up a fight to bring important conversations to mainstream discourse. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. But but my assessment on Devon Haney, right, is a um, pretty good assessment, isn't it? I think that the young man, right, conducts himself in an orderly fashion. I respect the way that his father has redeemed himself. And that redemption is shown through the abilities of, of Devon Haney. And that's why he gets my support. There's so many of these young boxers, both white and African-American and Mexican and South American or whatever you want to describe people. right? And it is a lot of it is arrogance and ego and gangster bling and all of that. Um, but that doesn't seem to resonate with me when I see Devon Haney. He's got a a habit of wearing too many gold chains studded with diamonds. I mean, honestly, right? It's um, but then again, you know, you can allow him certain things like that. Thank you, Zoe. Zoe says you are right about Devon Haney, but goes on further, and this is important. Zoe says, I like him, but I just feel Ryan, like Conor McGregor, has a bigger fight to take on against evil. And actually, I feel sorry for Devon Haney for being caught in the middle of it professionally. But that's fair enough, and I agree with that, yes. But fighting evil is more important than fighting each other for sport. Yes, I understand that, of course. But may the best man win. I personally think on ability, Devon Haney will win. And I've, you know, and I've, um, I've supported Devon Haney certainly the last few years. It's more than likely because of all the bad behaviour you see with a lot of these sporting stars, whether they're at MMA, MMA UFC, boxing, 
combat sports, whatever they are, footballers and that, I always get drawn towards the humble person, the person who's quiet. And in many ways, I know people didn't like him, but in other, but to be honest, he kept his, he, himself below the radar, although he should have assimilated more and learnt the language and everything. But Gareth Bale, when he was just happy to go to the golf course and have a sort of family life and everything, although his big mistake, I think, was not learning Spanish and trying to assimilate in. But the way he kept himself under the radar um, it, it is the way that I think is the best way. And so I'm always attracted to supporting people who are very quiet under the radar. Yes, now you, you're giving me the reason. You, you're giving me the reasons and justifying why I think Devon Haney is such an exceptional young man, right? Tank Davis is a pathetically cowardly fraud. He only fought Ryan Garcia if he took a rehydration clause. Makes the fight a joke. You can see how much of a moron Tank Davis is. Well, there's other behaviour that I would sort of point to as well. And there are other boxes out there, right, who you can point to and you can draw the line between hyping a fight up and their general behaviour in their everyday life. Yes, a, a, a wannabe gangster, you see, there's it's no good, any of that stuff. The problem is, the problem that we've got with it is that kind of gangstery, blingy kind of lifestyle, okay, um, right, has been led by people like P. Diddy and, and, and that for decades. So people not only see that as an attractive lifestyle in and of itself, they see people getting away with it. So they believe that they can get away with it. And then if they start to get a little bit of prominence, right, prominence means people become sycophants and then they think that they can act in that way and also get away with it. And then when people see them acting in that way, the general public, they think that they can do things maybe on a lesser scale, but in the same kind of way and they can get away with it and that's not you know that's wrong we've gone um we've gone from a society where the trappings of wealth were not to be flaunted and where the um mission statement or mantra of right um having great wealth also means you have great responsibility and, and, and what it means is that even if you don't want to get involved in charities and, and doing stuff, the so-called good stuff or whatever, you just keep your head down and you, and you glide underneath the radar. And that, yes, you might be photographed or written about at events you may attend, but in your everyday life, away from the cameras, you try to conduct yourself in an orderly fashion. Not least because you should be really pleased that you've achieved what you've achieved. Doesn't matter if you've got God-given talent, because it's not always the most talented who succeed. It's temperament as well. Morning, gang one. So, as I say, there's um. You know, there's plenty of debate. I always look at the person. You don't look at the person and have any pre, um, preconceived ideas. 
And we do stereotype, but to be honest with you, if you look hard enough, right, you can find alternatives. I mean, I've proved that time and time again. I mean, you've only got to have a look, okay? Let's do something local, something that we do understand. You've only got to look at the reputation and the stereotype of Scousers. Aggressive you know, overbearing, troublemaking, and all of those things, right? But it's just not true. There are good, bad, and indifferent people, right? Good, bad, and indifferent in all groups of people. And the thing is, is, is that the stereotype in a negative way, right, are a small percentage, but they tend to be prominent more and hog the limelight. Honestly, I know, I know it's true, right? Honestly, you can see aggressive scousers, aggressive travellers, aggressive Londoners, aggressive anyone. They're exactly the same in every area, in every group of people, in every council estate, and that there are the families who are the notorious, violent, aggressive, that people pretend they like rather than genuinely like, and there is a massive difference. And then there are the hard-working people who have never been in trouble with the police, have got an everyday job, they go to work, they come home, the kids go to school, the mum probably goes to work or runs a little business or does something. They have a holiday every year, they've got a new car every three years or something. They then sell the house and buy a little bit of a bigger house. They might have a caravan in North Wales or a villa in Spain. But no, their voices never get heard, do they? And so we always get this impression a stereotype, and it's easy to fall into that trap. I've done it myself. Of course I have. And when you have an argument with someone, part of the um, strategy of attack is to, uh, is to use a stereotype, is to focus on that. You are a so-and-so, so-and-so, right? It doesn't mean that you mean it to all of the people. It means you're, you're having a go at a specific person. But then people turn it round and use it as a weapon. And then you use it as to play the victim and all of that stuff. See, that's where the saying, sticks and stones might break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Those, right, the, you know, what that means is, is that when people, humans get annoyed and in the um, heat of the emotion, they can say things that they don't mean, but they're using them as a weapon to... to win an argument or to, um, uh, you know, to defend themselves. And we've all become little snowflakes too much. That's the problem. Reporting this and doing that and doing this and doing that. Busybody in this and busybody in that. Honestly. And to be honest, the worst offenders are the ones, right, that claim they never do it. Honestly, you hear some, oh, I would never do that. Well, you know that that means they're at it every day. And nothing annoys the trolls more than to see every day they go, oh, no, he's done another one. Because it's daily. And even though they're at different times, the relaxed atmosphere means I don't care. I don't want regular slots and let's eye up the audience and look at my demographic and all of that. No, it's what it has always been. Go live, here we go, no preparation, I'm looking around here, there's no notes on the table, there's no nothing. It's just your basic meat and two veg, 
meat and three veg, shall we call it. And I know there's a channel out there called that, but, you know, that's what the saying is. It's the staple diet. What you see is what you get, an everyday update of what's been going on in a broad way. And you notice the way the royal stories have gently been eased out of the news. You know, to, and, and it just... Um, when you see the segue from the mainstream media, I always find it interesting. It tells me to a certain extent they have the ability to control the news by the, the tap that they have. I know that they are directed a lot of the time. All right, that's enough of that. Can we move on to something else now? Okay, right, and Zoe says, yes, um, they reckon um, that Kate could have sort of left the family, so to speak, and taken the kids and gone, look, you know, and it's all gone wrong, okay, and they're just keeping up appearances. You might see her doing things, but what you've got to look for is body language, because if the body language between Princess of Wales and William, Kate and William, Right, is a bit off, right? You remember how it was with Prince Charles and Lady Diana or Princess of Wales in the 80s? Right from about 86, you could see they were very dif distant and they were living separate lives. So that may be it, I don't know. Stone, yes, no, I mean, yes, I oh know, I oh know. But again, you know, the reason why we've managed to prevail through all of the storms thus far is because we keep it very simple over here. First of all, we don't go out of our way to go and seek fighting and, and battles and, and provocative and all of that. So we find ourselves defending ourselves. So that, right from the start, right, is quite easy when you're defending against weak opposition, right? Well, and also when they throw stuff at you, right, that first of all is absurd, second of all, right, is not true, and third of all, maybe things that, that was already addressed right at the beginning of, of, the, of the Art Hostage channel, of course it's not going to have any effect. That mode of, of, of attack is only successful against vulnerable people, people at a low ebb, people with perhaps learning difficulties, because they succumb to that kind of stuff. And when they send their waves of, of, of vile drones over, right, we've got the Iron Dome that just picks them off. Each and every one. And, and one of their biggest problems has always been is that they are disunited. They're not a united group and that they've only cut, they're a disparate group, right? A groovy gang of people who don't like each other, let alone anyone else. It's like trying to get cats to stand in a line for a parade. As I say, we saw it on view. That yes, they come together when they've got a perceived com common enemy. 
But once they exhaust the attacks on their common enemy, right, they it, within seconds they start fighting amongst themselves. Again, jo um, again, Zoe, yes, you can, um, I mean, look, for consideration. And all Zoe would say is, as a general rule, perhaps those addicts or recovering addicts should not be on YouTube. There are plus and minuses for that. Yes, again, another good point, a salient point by Zoe. The trolls we have attacking us, they all have one thing in common. Massive insecurities, regret, inability to succeed and not accepting of themselves. They desperately want attention and fame. And turning to the subject of immigration and the double standards we start to see. We saw, right, and we're getting it captured more on film. Like, whatever you regard, Gideon Falter, right, and Jewish people or whatever, right? But just think, today it was them, tomorrow it's you. that you could be standing in, right instead of him right and standing there and you might be wearing a cross with your with your shirt open right and the police officer would say that you're openly christian and this is a pro palestinian march so you can't cross the road and could you leave please And then we get people like housing associations and we get accommodation, right, which um, we're seeing in, in certain anecdotal cases, right, certain cases where people who are, right, immigrants are being pushed to the top of the list. Again, causing resentment amongst those that they come to live amongst. And again, Pat, yes, you say that you live in what's that? So social housing, yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, I was thinking my circumstance, I don't know if you realise my circumstance, I'm living in a dilapidated, uninhabitable, semi-detached house. It really is. It hasn't been decorated or anything done since 2008. I live in two rooms. I really do. Right, there's holes in the ceiling, right, when every time it rains, it pours in. So buckets all over. So obviously I'm thinking my health is not that good. There's damp and everything all over the place, right? So, I mean, I'm thinking about me. I'm 60. I'm not getting younger. My health's not that good. And to be honest with you, right, if, if I weren't so stubborn, right, I mean, I would be better off in an assisted living place where I've got my own little flat. And then there's, you know, but the problem with that, I've thought about that, is you know what I'm like. If it's an assisted living and they have a communal space where everyone sits and that, you know I'm going to fall out with someone, you know, because I can't hold my tongue. There's going to be someone there 
an old boy or an old girl or someone like that, right? You know what I mean? A lady or, or a man, whatever, a couple or something, right? Who, who normally rule the roost, who are a bit dominant, right? And they'll try it with me and I'll go, yeah, well, you know where that's going to end. Right, so I'll end up falling out of them. Just like Pat Butch is having problems there, I know I would have problems. So that what always makes me reluctant to think about that as an option. But to be to be honest with you, it would help a lot. I mean, I'd imagine the best solution would be to get a lot of two-bedroom flat with a private landlord or the council. And they're not going to just close the door and that's it. So we all have to look at these things, right? But as I say, my health is not getting better and this is not that good. And it, you can say it's self-inflicted and all that stuff, right? But the place is just falling apart, falling apart. So, as I say, to be honest with you, that's it. But, I mean, as you know, I don't live, I exist. I mean, I'm not a recluse, so it don't really matter. And to be honest with you, my life consists of, right, of going to sleep, getting up, right, um, going into, right, the room, one room with the uh, monitor, turning it on and sitting here on the internet, going, getting something to eat, maybe, right, and then back to bed. I don't do anything other than that. I'm happy with that. So don't, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, that's that's what I do. But it gets too much for you. To be honest, all I need, really, is a bed sitting room, a big room with a bed in it, a sofa, a table with my computer on, and a kitchen and bathroom. That's it. That's all I need. And it could look out onto a brick wall for all I care. And two years ago, I mean, I think I already said this, but two years ago, do you remember when I was having all them death threats and the police came and done a security check and all of that stuff? Well, one of the things they said was, can you make sure you get anything combustible and get it out of the house? Because if there's anything unfortunate that might happen, it'll make it worse. So at that time, I, I managed to, I got a skip and, and threw everything in, you know, empty boxes and, and all of this, just shit, you know what I mean? But it was combustible, so I threw it all out. So now there's just like empty rooms with a bucket in the middle, right? With a, oh, and a couch with mildew on. But it makes me laugh because he used to live like that, Benny Hill. He had a great big, beautiful mason, um, what was it, um, masonette in Queen's Court in London. And he only lived in one room with two televisions. And he had, you know, double doors. You go in a beautiful, great big, like 30, 40 foot room with all kinds of things, but it was empty. So, to be honest, I've got to the stage where I'm setting my ways, I'm happy enough. As long as I can continue to do this, that's what my life's all about now, right? I've got health problems, so I'm restricted anyway. But people get stubborn, don't they? Or you get... um. Or you could just get set in your ways. 
So when you said that, Pat, it just made me think as well, yes. I mean, people would describe it that I'm living in abject poverty, but it's self-inflicted, though. That's the truth of the matter. So what else we got going on today, then? Any other news? Have we? Right. Any goals in the Leicester game yet? Anything else to report that's been going on? Let's have a look. Well, I've brought you an update of... Um, of most of the stuff that I can see. It's Saturday, so we got to see it's the weekend. And in many ways, right, we can we can be thankful that seven days after the attack of Iran on Israel, we've had a response from Israel, but that seems to be the end of it, right, for the time being. And day's finest, I don't know what that means, right? But 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 I can just imagine, right, honestly, um, you've had a couple of comments, right? And so, uh, you know, uh, jog on, as they say. I don't think you've got anything to contribute here. I, I detect that in two comments, to be honest with you. So the best thing you can do, right, is, is, is go elsewhere. People know now, people know, right, there's no excuse coming in, right, and saying, oh, I didn't know, or, oh, I didn't mean to say that. Well, you understand, this is a very strict channel now. It's ring-fenced. You've got to subscribe and wait 14 days before you can comment. And in them 14 days, if you're listening, right, you will know what you can say and what you shouldn't say, whether you're for the channel or against the channel. And if you want to engage, then engage. Don't try and come in here with, like, funny comments and try and make yourself, right, try to, try to um, get yourself on board. Because Zoe's very, very clued up on that stuff, right? And I'm getting a little bit more clued up. I can tell when someone comes in with a comment, Right, you can see, right, with the previous one, when they said, why are you shook by so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so? right? That's, you know, that's an opening salvo. And then if you come back and go, oh, I'm not trying to get me on that subject, you see. So I'll just nip it in the bud now. That's what we can do. And to be honest, as I've said before, if Zoe or I make a mistake, all we can do is say we're very sorry. But at the end of the day, I would rather get rid of nine guilty trolls and one innocent troll than, you know, than, than ignore the threat. Because it's made the channel much, much better, leaner. So anyway, right, I can bring this home now. Hit the likes and subscribe. You can buy me a coffee at the um, um, at, pinned at the top. 
and we can do it all again later on, maybe tonight, you know what I mean, or whatever. We're always here. So on that note, I'm going to bring this home. And you're right, Zoe, we have a 100% success rate. And what's that, Zoe? Art Hostage, I doubt the trolls will be back after the live we did here with on with on and the one they did the other night. They are finished, of course. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you, you know, um, maybe to a certain extent, but whenever there's an opportunity to have a swipe, they will. But that's all right. In many ways for the channel, yes, it could go at any time because we know they report it on a daily basis. But what we've done is we've ring-fenced it, right? We've taken actions, right, which means that they're not welcome here. Now, all it means is they're going to get even more desperate. But let's hope that's elsewhere. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there are going to be some videos coming. You know, those stupid videos, this, that and the other. But that's fine. I don't care. It don't matter to me. What's this? Yes, exactly, Zoe. Yes, as and when. Yeah, that what when I what they do is they just look for other victims. They look for other people that might be going through a bad time and that are vulnerable. And then you'll notice them starting arguments with them. And if not, you can guarantee they'll be arguing amongst themselves. Because that is evident is evident whenever they come together on a channel, even if they have a common enemy and common friends, right, that it only takes a few minutes before one starts, throws a little comment in, then someone comes back, and the next thing, they're all at it, at each other's throats, so yeah, it don't, you know, it doesn't matter to me, what they, what they never understood, right, it was the rules of engagement, because we don't care over here, right, we were always going to win, and personally, right, I always win because I always do. I win, I always do. But the main reason we won is because the lack of what we did rather than what we did. We just allowed them to self-destruct. Well, exactly, Zoe, of course. I mean, it was one of the most classic cases of blowback you've ever heard of. When you when, when they attacked, right, one of them had a, a huge channel, right? After they finished attacking, right, one of them didn't have a huge channel. As I said to you, right, one of them was trying to get out of the gutter and the other ones wanted to pull him back in the gutter. And they succeeded. How do we know? Because the thing that he was building up, right, has been taken away. And so he's got to start again. So he's back down in the gutter with them. And that was of no doing of anyone over here. So that's the difference, is that sometimes you can win by doing nothing. So anyway, right, um, I'll bring this one home for the Saturday. We could come back tonight, but a few people might be live. I'll see how I go. I've been up since what time did I get up this morning? I can't even remember. It was very early. Very early. Six o'clock, something like that. 
so I might go a bed early. As I say, this coming week, I've got quite a bit on, no, not least in the health department. And I'm not looking forward to that, you know, with, with, with trepidation. I've got to do some stuff to send off, but right for Monday, and I ain't got, I can't be asked. So what I'm going to do is I'm hedging my bets. I will send something off, right, but it'll be more more of a promise to do something right next week, right, manana. Right, when in doubt, leave it out, walk away, live to fight another day. You know, and I'm, what I'm going to do, right, is say, because I've got all this coming up this week, can we leave it a week? Can I get back to you? But here's some stuff to go on with to start with, right? And that might give you some background and help you and all that, right? But can we leave it a week? I mean, I live, right, it, I live 24 hours to 24 hours, so I'll look and think, oh, oh, tomorrow's Sunday. I ain't got anything to do then. And then tomorrow I'll be thinking, oh, bloody hell, it's Monday. All right, okay, what have I got to do? Oh, then it's Tuesday. Oh, God, what have I got to do? Wednesday, Thursday. You know what it's like. So, as I say, what we can do is um, I'll bring it on. Um, I can do something later if the wherewithal's there, if there's some news to bring you, if that we can have a chat. We could even go on the Burner channel. But to be honest with you, there's not much that we can do. We did, um, right, I did it before. If I go on the Burner channel tonight, it'll be easy, right? But it'll be um, after 10, 15 minutes, it'll be, it'll be back to just talking about stuff that we could leave on the main main channel. So you never know. I'll have to go and open up another account. Because as you know, when I close down the um, lives on the burner channel, I delete the account. And then I open up a new one. Right, each time I do it. So I'll bring this home now. Hit the likes and subscribe. You can buy me a coffee pinned at the top. I'll bring this home. Is there anything you would like to add, Zoe? Yeah, see, that's what's called... Um, that's what's called um, courtesy. Okay, that's what's called um, courtesy. That's all it is. But people don't like that. They want to make things into things that they're not. So, Zoe, is there anything that you would like to add? Is there anything that I may have forgotten? And Zoe says, I would like to add the trolls have been defeated again. We have a nice path ahead now until we have to deflect them again. It's like swatting flies. Uh, Newcastle person, right, asking me to make peace. What do you mean make peace? I've got no problems with anyone. If there's any arguments, it's one-sided. If people attack me, right, I, I don't attack back um, unnecessarily. I defend myself. And still, when pe when things are said in private, they, they are, by definition, private. I don't want to be here um, saying, oh, yeah, this one, someone told me this in private about someone else. And someone else told me something in private about someone else. No, I'm not going to do that. 
I'll let other people do that if they want to do that. If they want to betray people's confidence, let them do it. I don't care. Makes no difference to me because I stand by every word I say in public and in private. Exactly. So what I'm going to do with that Newcastle one, they've got to go. Um, Stone, um, yes, the Burner channel's still there. When I say I open a new account, I mean to stream it. The streaming account I have, I close every time we close down the live, and then I open a brand new streaming account. But the channel, well and fact, is still there. Of course it is. Let me go and get you the link where you can go and subscribe. And Sheriff is still there, yes. I haven't had any need to, um, hang on. No, let's do it again. Right. Well and Feck. There it is there. Go and subscribe. No, I just change the streaming uh, accounts every time. I close them down and open a new one. And that way you get 20 hours each, each go. But some people can't let go and they get obsessed. Well, I mean, I can't do anything about that. I'm not obsessed by any of them. It don't mean anything to me. I've got other things to think about, bigger fish to fry and all that. Not least um, um, doing the stuff that we do here. And we had three people in today, or was it two, that have waited 14 days. They've come in and made two comments, one gone, two comments, another one gone. People must have loads of accounts staggered on days they open them or subscribe. And then they desubscribe and then subscribe. Ah, is that the game they're playing? Oh, that, is that why they're trying to say that I'm losing subscribers? No, it's because I'm blocking people. And as 10 people subscribe, right, as they, their accounts get blocked, they go down again. That's all it is. Exactly. I know, yeah, so we are no, I know. I know I picked it I picked up on that exact phrase. That exact phrase I picked up on it. Yes, I did. Yes, I did, I picked up on it, I did. But as I say, go and yeah, go and subscribe over there, right? Because um, it's uh, that's the burner channel. Yeah, sheriff's still sitting there. And again, if we get problems on the burner channel, I'll just close it down and open a new one. It's not difficult. You know, it's not rocket science, is it? And once you blunt all the weapons that can be used against you, right? You right? Then it's um, it can be fun, but you can see people getting frustrated. If ever I appear on other channels in the comments, all the haters can't wait to come in and jump on it. Honestly, it makes me laugh. It does.
And what I've got a tendency to do as well is I'll write a comment on another channel so that the host can see it on the stream yard and then I'll delete the comment and it'll be retracted. And the reason that is is so I don't become the focal point or people wanting to say, but it means I'm addressing the host. And then if they want to um, um, talk, um, mention the comment or say hello or whatever, it's fine. But like um, other stuff, you see, a lot of these people, they not only look for vulnerable people having a hard time, they look for newbies as well. People who come onto YouTube, they're predators, parasites, cockroaches. Because I noticed that when I came on YouTube, that all of a sudden, right, that I was doing my art crime thing, right, I was getting a few people... Um, talking about it and things like that, right? But then all of a sudden when I, I went on to one of the channels, well, the next thing they all descended and came out of the woodwork, all of those from ZooTube. You know what they're like. They all came out of the woodwork work. And what you have to do, like like a teacher will have to do, if you've got, if you say, right, I'm taking a class of 30 children, right, and about 12 of them, right, are disrupting the class. Well, one by one, you exclude them from the class. And so you're left with 18 children who want to learn or want to participate. So anyway, I'll bring this home now. Hit the likes and subscribe. You can buy me a coffee at the top. And we'll do it all again a day later. If not, we'll do it tomorrow. I might even do one on the Burner channel, but that's why you should go over and, and um, subscribe to it so you get the notification. So on that note, I'll bring this home. And we can do it again. Let me just see if anything's broken, any news. Because things happen all the time. You could keep going on, couldn't you, eh? So thanks very much for joining me on this Saturday. Right, let's see how the football's going to turn out. Oh, they've been playing half hour. Is it still nil-nil? Is it Leicester? Let's have a look. Just before I go. In the Scottish semi-final, okay, after 33 minutes, it's Aberdeen 1, Celtic 1. Aberdeen scored after two minutes. Miofsky, but but Celtic equalised after 21 minutes by Khan Kuhn. And so perhaps they will um they'll run away with it. And Celtic fan Rod Stewart and his son are at Hamden today, looking very smart, looking very smart indeed. Leicester are winning 1-0 at home to West Bromwich Albion. And Diddy scored in 22 minutes. So that means Leicester are back on top of the table with 91 points. Ipswich have got 89 and Leeds have got 87 
And to be honest with you, you know, um, Zoe don't normally call it far wrong. Normally, you know, and to be honest, Zoe has said she believes her head, sorry, her heart says she wants Leeds to get automatic promotion, but uh, but her head tells her that it will be Leeds will get into the playoffs, which I think is honest. Which is an honest admission. So anyway, I will definitely. I know the long goodbye. I know. I just keep talking, don't I? Right. I was going to stop this at fifty-nine minutes. That's twenty-one minutes ago. So you've had a twenty-one minute goodbye. So I will bring this home now. Hit the like, subscribe, buy it, me a coffee pinned at the top, and this is our hostage. Signing off.